Okay, this is the third video and it's just going to touch on conflict and I'm going to use a skirmish as a simple example of how conflict works so that it's not too complex. Alright, so what we've got is we've got a three zone thing. I've just drawn two yellow lines to indicate there's three zones. So player character one starts down here, player character two is up here at the top. Um, they're divided by a zone and we have a conflict that has begun. Under any normal circumstances, unless the GM chooses to spend two threat points, it's a player character who starts with initiative, so we'll assume that's what's happening. And if you have a look at the picture in the corner, you'll see the flow that we're going to follow, which is the standard flow for any action sequence. So, uh, I'm starting, and uh, we will say I'm playing not Sister... Uh, we'll play Hazara, who's deadly. Um, and also, more importantly, it has an actual weapon. So Hazara is down here at the bottom of the zone. He needs to move through this zone in the middle um, to get to his opponent, who is in the third zone up here. Under any normal circumstances, he would choose to use... He chooses to close, so that's what he's going to do. And the asset that he's going to be using is his... And I apologise for the mistaken pronunciation, but a Kinjal. Um, Right, so first of all, uh, what am I doing? Am I going to move? Yes, because I don't have a ranged weapon. So I can move one space effectively for free unless I want to use my subtle or bold movement. And I do need to, and if I do that, um, I need to make a skill test at DT2, at D2, so difficulty two, to move either subtly or boldly. If I fail that skill test, uh, then I'm in all sorts of trouble because I will have not have moved at all. So let's have a look at Hazara and say he's going to do the move. Needless to say, he ticks his move skill. Uh, for the sake of this conversation, that'll do. Um, and he's protecting someone, so he's going to use justice. Uh, which gives him a TN of 14 and more importantly if I wanted to I can use my determination point I must shield those in my care um, equally let's have a look and see whether he's got a focus he's got a focus of grace so if I wanted to move subtly which is probably what I might want to do so he's going to try and sort of spring around and catch this guy by surprise then I could actually call in my focus as well so with that focus, that means I will crit on a, and I think his move was six. Yes, I will crit on a six or below. Now, I'm choosing to move, and as noted, if I get one zone, uh, I move for one zone, I'm making the dice roll. If I happen to over-succeed on that, uh, I will get some momentum, which I may choose to use. So... I will burn my uh, I'll burn my dice roll. I'm going to take the two. Uh, I'm not going to buy any additional dice because I feel pretty confident, perhaps bravely, um, and I know I'm succeeding on a six or below. So I just roll. Whew, that's four successes because uh, both of those are below my critical number of six, which means my move I've. I've I've used two to do the subtle move and I've got two momentum left. So I can use that momentum to close the distance, which is exactly what I do. So I have now in one action moved the two zones and I've done it subtly, which means I can hold initiative because a subtle move means that I pay no cost to keep initiative for the next round. Now, just as a small side note, so let's just think about initiative for one second. Initiative um, just goes backwards and forwards between the players and the GMs under any normal circumstance, and you get one action. So I can do one move, then I give it to the GM, they do something, then they give it back to me, I do something, and so forth and so on. However, a player character can choose to keep the initiative at the cost of two momentum, or if they've moved subtly, they can keep the initiative at zero cost. So let's assume that he's going to keep the initiative at zero cost, which means I get another action. Woo. So what is that action going to be? Well, I'm now in the same zone as my opponent, and my opponent is a minion who, let's assume, is wearing a shield. 
Um, now, if he's wearing a half shield, uh, which is what we will assume, actually, if he's wearing a shield, um, then I need plus one difficulty to take him down uh, and knock him out. And normally I would only need one difficulty because he's a minion. Uh, so minions go down with one success. Uh, the shield that he's wearing adds, or half shield that he's wearing adds one success. So that's two successes. And I'll just double check that actual, that statement about the shields because sometimes I get it wrong. Melee attacks against shielded foes increased by difficulty one. No, it's correct. So he's got to, I've got to get two successes to take him down. In addition, because I'm keeping initiative, I'm getting an additional plus one. So I'm at three successes, right? So let's just be clear. And I've not applied any traits from the area or the landscape. I've just left that alone for now. Um, I will need three successes to succeed. Um, if I get those three successes, my opponent will go down because as a minion, as a, as a minor NPC as opposed to a major one, um, that's all I am required to do. So once again, Hazara will now use his battle skill and his Kinjal. Now, it's a long blade, it's a melee weapon, and it's traditional. Those are his, the keywords for the thing, and you'll notice, uh, because I'm not afraid to do a little bit of forethought, uh, I have given the focus of long blades to my battle skill. So that means I can use my focus and I can use the trait of the weapon to reduce the um, the difficulty. It's quite potent. Now, some people might disagree with that, and I understand completely why you might. I'm just teasing it out. Each GM has to make their own choices. Uh, I'm also a Swordsmaster, but I'm not engaged in something that I think triggers that as my trait. So I've got two successes now that I require because the trait of the weapon combined with the skill has reduced that by one from three to two. Uh, I hit my uh, battle skill, first of all, um, and then, oh, hold on, clear, sorry, I had forgotten to clear it from before, uh, so I hit my battle skill, and then I will hit, uh, I think I'm still, I must shield those in my care, um, so I'll go with that, which gives me 15 as my target number, uh, as noted previously, I still have my focus, because uh, I'm using my long blade, and I need two successes. So I will add those. Now, um, I need two successes. I've got a 15. It's pretty likely I will crit on a seven or below. Do I want to go and buy that extra point of success though, just to make sure that the guy goes down? Probably. So let's go to the session sheet. Um, reduce the momentum by one, uh, which I've now done. So that means I get an additional die uh, right there. So I'm now rolling three die um, against a difficulty of two, two successes, and the guy goes down. Oh, I've got a complication. I've got, <laughs> I got an eight. So I actually did not take him down. Not only that, I actually suffer a consequence for my action. Um, because actually it turns out that's the way the cookie crumbles. So let's talk about complications for one second. Um, if I go to, uh, I'm using my little thing here, uh, and I've got rules and I've got complications. Um, example complications. Okay, so for battle, because I'm in battle, I can take bruised, exhausted, well, these are examples, bruised, exhausted, flanked, um, injured, stunned, dazed, I've lost my weapon. All right, so let's assume I've tried to stab him with my weapon and my complication is I've lost my Kinjal, um, which is a terribly devastating thing for our good mate Hazara. Okay, so uh, we have failed in our mission to take this guy down and what will now happen is he will roll against us. Now, I don't have a character sheet ready for the NPC, so let's just use... Uh, our good lady sister Cider as an example um, she's going to use let's just say for the sake of conversation uh, you know they're not great combatants uh, and yep so we roll for I'm using her as a example she's got 10 seems legit uh, I don't have a weapon currently. Um, this person doesn't have any weapons either. 
we'll assume they've got a knife for the sake of conversation. Uh, they're a minion, so they're basically going to roll two dice under any normal circumstances. Uh, I'm not wearing any armor. I'm also not wearing a shield. So do they get any? They get two successes. Okay. So their move. So remembering it's action followed by action followed by action. Um, and they got the next action. I didn't have a weapon. They got two successes. Uh, I don't have any armor. That counts against my battle skill. Uh, as an example, my character has a battle of, I think it's seven. Yeah, seven. So I would need to take seven hits to go down. And what happens is if I got those two successes, which I did, and I'm gonna assume that hits, it's the asset does two damage plus uh plus one for each point of quality above zero so because they're using a basic knife i take two points of damage um so in effect i've taken two against my seven battle and i'm down to five battle as a risk now there's nowhere to really record that so i'll just put it down here and i'll just say battle five dash conflict so that I remember. Uh, and then it's my action again. Uh, so once again, I'll just hit clear so I don't accidentally have all of that. Uh, now, I don't have a sword at the moment. It's lying on the ground, I've dropped it. So what I might do is try and pick up that sword. Uh, and I'm not sure how to do that. So I think what we're gonna assert that is, is I'm gonna try and uh, use my action I'm going to use asset and I'm going to use the sort of mechanics for creating an asset um, in the scene to pick it back up so I go all right I've dropped my sword uh, I'm going to try and pick it up that sounds to me like it's move again um, and I'm going to dive bravely for the sake acceptance of of place is the death of freedom there you go or i trust my heart not my head okay so i'm going to dive for the weapon so i'm going to apply that as my two like i said i don't have the kinjal at the moment so i don't get any focus or anything like that um and um, grace and probably stretching so let's just roll okay oh and i got a critical so i got two successes now it's up to the GM to have decided how hard it was to pick up, but under any normal circumstances, it's um, difficulty to, to create an asset. Now, normally, if I wanted to make that asset permanent, I would have to spend two momentum. Um, however, it's already a permanent asset, I'm just picking it up, so we'll rule that that's my action. Now, I don't have any momentum at the moment, so I can't hold on to initiative. I have to give it back to the other person. There's no momentum in the pool and I didn't get enough successes to get additional momentum. So I'm literally handing it back over to the to the minion um, who we rolled earlier. The minion picks up their sword again. Uh, I think this time they've got to roll their battle skill and uh, oh, let's say they're loyal warriors of of House Harkonnen, so they're going to roll um, this time just eight. They do that. How many successes do they get? Oh, they're on fire. Another two successes, which means I am now down to five. Because as we said earlier, if your asset value quality is um, pretty much ordinary. So, oh, this is looking bad for my swordsman who is not doing well. Uh, however, it is the swordsman action again, so we're flicking backwards and forwards. This time the swordsman has got his kinjal again. He's loaded up for bear. Um, his acceptance of place is the death of freedom. I trust my heart. Nope, I'm going with my justice. I'm shield those who are in my care. I'm still trying to protect my principal. Uh, I'm using my battle skill. Oh, hold on. I'm using my battle skill. Actually, it's interesting to me. It's just a thought, but I would actually flip the drives and the skills because you choose the skills first under an action movement and then you choose the drive. Hmm. I might rejig that in the character sheet. Um, Shumanda, if you can see this, I just mentioned that as a possibility. Um, okay, so I got 15. Um, once again, I can critical on a seven because of my uh, battle skill and because of my focus, which is long bays. I've got a trait. 
Uh, this time I haven't moved. So it was only D... It was D1 to take this guy down. Um, and I had an, an additional one because he's wearing a shield, so that's two. However, I haven't moved and I haven't got hold of um, initiative. So I only need two successes minus one for uh, the trait that I'm using, which is that I'm using this long blade in my hands. So I only need one success. I don't have any momentum. I'm gonna roll and this time the guy is going down. Yep, absolutely slaughtered him. So I have taken him down. He is down because as a minion, he only takes one hit to take down. And I can add that additional point of momentum because it took me one momentum to take him down, go back into my character, into my session sheet and up the momentum by one. Uh, one thing I haven't played with is uh, threat through this, but uh, threat works pretty similarly to momentum. Also as a GM, I haven't been playing with the threat rules. It's just a bit more than we need to talk about at the moment. Uh, but basically the GM can spend threat to achieve certain outcomes and actions. For instance, I can buy initiative with two points of threat. I can buy additional dice for my minions um, on the same basis that you buy initiative. Uh, sorry, you buy additional dice. Uh, so it works pretty much the same way. So that is a skirmish played out in real time. I hope that was of assistance.